Hey y'all. All right. So I am back at the apartment and I honestly have to say that I had a fantastic time. It was such a good meetup. I tried to get a little bit of footage from there. Um, there was about 14, 15 ladies that showed up. All right, y'all, I just got back from the social club meetup, so I will give y'all an update here when I get back to the apartment. Um, so it was a really, really good time. Um, we're gonna get together again in a couple weeks out in Oklahoma City. So they had the Galentines here in Tulsa, and then they're gonna have some other event. Is it next, is it next Saturday? It might be next Saturday. I think it's next Saturday, yeah because they do two events every month. But I'll be making my little way out to um, Oklahoma City. I'll try and capture some of that road trip for y'all, but you know, I don't know where I'm going and I need Google Maps all the way. So we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, so I think what I'm gonna do, uh, I probably shouldn't have. So the place that we went to Everything on the menu was fried and I haven't had fried food in a very long time. Um, and I almost thought to forego ordering anything, um, but I ended up getting some nuggets and some fries. And I have to tell y'all, I feel like I didn't eat anything. So I might make myself a salad later on, yeah. All right, so tomorrow we're gonna be heading out and going to one of the um, historic tours. So that should be a good time. I think the weather's gonna be a little bit nicer. It's cloudy today, so it's kind of like, hmm. So I hope we're gonna get some sunshine. I know it's definitely going to be warmer. All right, y'all. So I'm gonna get on the phone with Kashi Poo so we can fill out her permanent fund. And that'll be that. Hey, y'all. All right, so today is Sunday and we are getting ready to head out. I need to make a real quick run to Walmart because I bought this thing that I want to put on my coffee table. There's my coffee table. I still need to put it together. Um, but I was going to set it on top of the coffee table, put some books and some other stuff in it to make it look cute. But it's too big. Let me show you. This right here. I picked it up from Wally World. And I thought it was really nice, but it's just too big. So maybe I could find something that's like maybe half the size. And look, y'all, I am so impressed with how these flowers that baby girl got me are holding up. They look so cute. They look really good. All right. All right, yeah, so we're going to get out here on the road. I do have a tour. I signed up for a tour today. It's like a historical building tour. Now, it's tricky because it's 50 something degrees, but I don't know if I should wear a jacket or not. So I might get one of my real light, lightweight jackets and roll it up and put it in my crossbody. Um, but I don't want to be burning up, so I'm, <laughs> but I don't want to be cold either. So anyway, um, I'm wearing a turtleneck and then I love these pants. They look like riding pants, but they're not, but they're like multi-purpose pants, love them. And then these boots here and my crossbody, of course. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get out here on the road and I will check in when we, we're going to Walmart and we might go somewhere else. I don't know, we'll see. I was supposed to be giving y'all an update on something. Um, <laughs> just as quick as I walked over here, I forgot. All right, so if it comes to mind, then I'll mention it. But I have to say, I like how the, the light is kind of reflecting off my skin. Oh, it looks pretty nice. That's what I wanted to give y'all an update on. Hold on, let me sit down. All right, so y'all know I went and got that um, hydrofacial. I think it was Tuesday of last week. Today is Sunday. So Tuesday of last week, I went and got a hydrofacial. That hydrofacial tore my skin up. I mean, I got a rash on my neck and I don't know if it was from the uh, the little machine that they, these dogs are going off. Anyway, um, that's aggravating. I 
I didn't know that uh, ghetto experiences was gonna be this expensive. But anyway, um, yeah, so I had welts on my neck. I don't know if it was from the serum or from the tool that they used to perform the hydrofacial. And then my skin just got dried out so bad. I got one of those magnifying mirrors and with it being a hydrofacial, you would think that it would like really, it would replenish and restore the moisture in your skin. But my skin was in a bad way, y'all. And I paid, it was, it was pretty close to $200 for that procedure. So never again, I won't ever, ever, never, ever, never go back and get that procedure. Hydrofacial does not work for me. It might work for other people, but it definitely did not work for me. So I had to get on task and, you know, with my toners and my serums and my, um, my cream and Vaseline, y'all do not sleep on Vaseline. If you have areas of skin that are like chapped, tried and true, old school. Um, so anyway, y'all, yeah, that's the update I want to give you. Now my foot peel turned out fantastic. My feet are so nice. And I think I'm gonna do it again, probably the first Friday or Saturday of every month. I wanna start doing that. Um, so yeah, those are my updates. I need to scoot so I can get back in time so I can head out for that tour thingy. All right. All right. I got my new laptop. I am beyond excited. Um, so I just gotta go to one more Best Buy because. All right, so they didn't have the stylus in stock that I wanted to get. So I gotta head over to another Best Buy. But then after that, we're good. So I decided to forego the tour because the weather is looking kind of iffy. The weather is weird here. It really is. It looks like it's gonna like start I hate it when I say like a lot. It looks like it's going to start raining a lot. So, and they have thunder and lightning and I don't wanna be driving out in it or let alone walking in it. So I'm gonna hurry over to this Best Buy, pick up the stylus, and then we are heading back to the apartment to open our goodies. Yes. Y'all, <laughs> this is definitely not on the menu, but guess what? We're gonna have this. So I got some church's chicken. I haven't had church's chicken in years. But look, I got a breast, a thigh, and a leg in this biscuit thingy. And mashed potatoes and gravy, y'all. We are about to have a quote unquote home cooked meal. Well, this is like a southern style meal. All right. Can't wait to get home and get into it. All right, y'all. Oh, hold on, let me make sure the volume is up. All right, y'all, we are back in the house. And I'm seriously trying to decide if I wanna dog walk this food on camera, or if I wanna keep it classy and shut the camera off and eat like a lady. Well, I'm not gonna eat like a lady, but you know. Y'all don't need to see all that. Y'all need to hear all the disrespectful smacking and licking of the fingers and all that, but look. Is it just me because we don't have church's chicken in Alaska? I don't know what they put in those chickens, but they are huge. They are gigantic. And then look at this biscuit. Look at how it glistens. I know y'all catching the light. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Now let's see what these mashed potatoes are looking like. I mean, it's hard to mess up mashed potatoes. And then we got our lemonade here. Um, so I think, let me grab a napkin. I think what I'm gonna do is just give y'all a, a replay of what I did. So initially I left to go to the historic tour, but I decided against it. Number one, the weather is, I, I don't trust it. I don't trust it today. It felt decent outside, but it was a little windy. That's why I threw the hat on. And then um, I've been having a little bit of a lingering headache 
and I think that it might be from the dipping sauce that I had at that restaurant I went to yesterday for that social club meetup. <clears throat> because some places for their teriyaki sauce, and I didn't ask for teriyaki sauce because that's what they brought me, they put MSG in it. And MSG triggers, it actually triggers migraine headaches for me. So um, I think that might be what caused that. I don't know where I put my ibuprofen. I'm searching high and low. Don't want to buy more because I know I have a lot. So I'm going to have to find it. Um, so I wasn't really up for being social, I guess is what it comes down to. Um, so anyway, I did manage to go and pick up a laptop. So we'll do an unboxing of that. And then I got um, a stylus because I got the type of laptop that has a touch screen and you can use it as a notebook. So, or a tablet. So I'm happy for that. And then I went to World Market again. I picked up some more botanical drinks. I'll have to show y'all. Oh, and I did try that Black Girl Magic Riesling and it was really good. Very good. I was surprised because wine in a can, I was a little skeptical, but yeah, it tastes really good. So, oh. What do I want to talk about? Because I, I don't want to just eat in front of y'all. And I feel like this is going to be really tasty. So you know what? I am going to opt for shutting off the camera. And then I will come back to y'all. I'm going to give y'all an update on how things have been going with the self-care that I've been pursuing for the month of February. You might be a little surprised at what I say. Um, we're in the middle of the month right now. It's the, I think today is the 19th. So yeah. All right, y'all. I will check back in, though. I'm going to finish. I'm going to eat, not all of this, but I'm going to eat probably like two pieces of chicken. I'll save the chicken breast for tomorrow. That's my least favorite. Um, and then I'll come to y'all with a chit chat and unboxing. And that's it. All right. Okay, friends. I'm back. Um, this church's chicken was not that great. I feel like... The reason why it looks so big is because most of it is the crunch, the crust or crunchy stuff. I don't know what you call it. And I mean, I can appreciate that it wasn't really salty because I don't like salty, salty food, but it kind of tasted a little bitter. And then when I, so I like peeled off the crunchy stuff and then I just started trying the meat and the meat, it just wasn't good. It wasn't good. The biscuit was good, but Church's chicken is a no for me, y'all. That lemonade hitting. <laughs> that lemonade is hitting, y'all. You had me in a chokehold. Mm. Okay, so the lemonade is good. I wasn't gonna drink the lemonade. I bought some peach juice. And I was gonna make myself a little mimosa, but that lemonade. That's some good lemonade. It doesn't make up for the chicken though because I paid $10 and some change for this meal. And I know that includes tax, but I won't be having. The mashed potatoes were okay. Again, it's hard to mess, mess up mashed potatoes, but the chicken they didn't have. I might go through the drive-thru just to get their biscuits though. And I might, while I'm, while I'm at it, get some lemonade, but yeah. All right, so what am I gonna do next? I think next I'm gonna do I might just chill. Let me give y'all an update on my little self-care regimen I've been going through. So, um, what I set out to do for the month of February is a self-care act every single day. Starting out, and I kind of started ahead of time. I started at the end of January doing some of that, but it kind of started feeling like a have to and I got overwhelmed. And I think I got overwhelmed because I was thinking of what I needed to do for self-care and then that I needed to film it. So y'all didn't see some of the stuff I was doing for self-care, but what I learned out of that, I think, is that what I would like to do is maybe take one or two things that I'm gonna say I'm gonna do every week and I can change it up weekly, but daily just kind of like putting myself I felt like I was putting myself to task for self-care and that's the complete opposite of self-care 
But that's the thing with me is like, if I get invested in something and really excited and passionate about it, I kind of, hold on. Okay, I hope I don't have food in my teeth while I'm talking. Please forgive me if I do. Um, but what was I saying? Yeah, I felt like I was putting myself to task by trying to do that every day. Self-care is supposed to be pleasurable. It's supposed to be something that you do that is just enjoyable time for yourself where you're the, the focus. And everything that I was doing was geared towards self-care, but the way I was going about it is what I should say. So I'm good with, I wanna journal at least three to four times a week. I wanna meditate at least however many times a week. You know, just being mindful and saying, hey, I do want to make sure and take time out at least once a week to focus on some type of self-care act. I don't have to do it every single day. If I want to do it every single day, that's fine. And here's the thing too, I know there are people who watch my channel that they have kids, you know, they have families or significant other or whatever. It's just me, right? And so for me to say, oh, I'm gonna do self-care every single day, that's easy for me to say. Now, I did do it every single day by taking a nice warm bath, right? But that was something that I kind of built into my regimen over time. <clears throat> so that's what I want to say about self-care. Um, even the seven days of self-care, when I got to like day five, I was just kind of like, because it was like something different every single day. I think I could get down with like meditating seven days a week, journaling seven days a week. Um, but you know, I was talking about, okay, I'm going to go out and catch a sunset, catch a sunrise and da 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 da. Every day it had to be something different. But it doesn't. If you find something that you really enjoy, like I really enjoy listening to affirmations, guided meditations, and journaling, and reading. But I'm not going to read my book every single day, is what I found out. Because there are so many other things that I want to do. So yeah, I just wanted to give y'all that update on my whole self-care practice. And I'm learning. I'm learning. You know, it's trial and error. You try something, you figure out what works and then you tweak it and then you try it again so all right so there's that i think before i do the unboxing for the laptop i'm gonna take just a little beat i'm hoping a nap doesn't roll up on me you know when you eat stuff like this it's all mostly carbs so it might i might have to take a little oh, i might have to take a little siesta but yeah, regardless, I, I am going to do the unboxing and show y'all the botanical drinks that I picked up from World Market. All right, y'all. I'll be back. good morning it's Monday so before I get started with my day I wanted to check in real quick um, yeah you know what I thought about quitting YouTube I thought about quitting YouTube because um, I want to focus on myself but then I thought about it and I was like I really want to you know take you guys along with me for this journey and you know, share information and I love this community that we've created and all that and I don't want to abandon it. Um, but I think it's because um, I've just been having some self-doubt about the direction that I'm taking the channel and I know this is what I want to do. I know this is the focus, which is, you know, um, just rebuilding a life that you love. And in the words of Debrina Jackson Gandy, creating a juicy life whatever that looks like for you so I'm gonna keep posting and stuff um I don't know how often I'm gonna pick up the camera to do vlogs because for me that seems like a lot of work but I'm not gonna completely step away from YouTube um so what I want to get on here and talk about all right so I was listening to this woman talk about um she was talking about narcissistic relationships and when she was talking about narcissistic relationships, she wasn't necessarily, well, she wasn't just focused on like romantic relationships. You hear a lot of people talk about having um, 
a romantic partner that was a narcissist and putting them through hell. And it's weird because this term narcissist, I hadn't heard about it until last year. And it's probably been around since forever, but I mean, YouTube is flooded with, <laughs> with people talking about that. And you know what I think? I think for people, especially if you have attracted narcissists into your life on a regular basis, like recurring basis, I think you probably grew up with a narcissist as a parent. You had a narcissist as a parent or you had a close family member. It could have been a grandparent. It could have been an aunt or uncle. All right, it could have been an aunt and, or an uncle, you know, family member, basically. <clears throat> School teacher, someone at church, you know, any, it could have been anyone who had recurring access to you, right? Consistent access to you. And I think that what happens is when you have an experience with someone who is a narcissist, it, and I'm talking about this because I have experienced it too. I didn't know what it was called. But after I listened to a few videos, I was like, wow. And, and it seems like it's something that's prevalent um, nowadays. Well, I don't even want to say nowadays because, I mean, you know, from early childhood. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's kind of like when you, it's very traumatic to experience um, a narcissist on a regular basis. And I actually... My most recent encounters were with a guy, well, actually two guys that I met online. I believe that online platforms are the narcissist playground. That is not my um, saying. I saw it somewhere, but I believe that's true. Um, probably for men and women. But yeah, the, the two last guys that I met, one was a covert narcissist. One was just an outright narcissist. And I think that, um, I think it's a form of me mental illness, to be honest with you. And I think it's a form of mental illness that comes about as some type of trauma that they suffered in their life. Um, but it's almost like with the uh, outright narcissist, it's, it's like a demonic experience. <laughs> it's so weird. It's like they'll do things to hurt you or to damage your self-esteem. And then they'll turn it around to make it seem like you did something to deserve it, or they just absolutely take no accountability for it. But it's like a repeated behavior. And I remember this one guy that I met online, he did a few things and I called him out on it. And he tried to make it seem like it wasn't a big deal and like I was imagining it and blowing it out of proportion. I said, don't gaslight me. And he was like, I don't even know what that means. And I'm looking at him like, I'm looking at him like, well, you should, because that's what you're trying to do right now. Um, so I would say men and women, educate yourself on narcissistic behaviors. Um, check yourself and make sure that you're not exhibiting narcissistic behaviors either, especially if you grew up with someone close to you who was a narcissist, because you could be, you may not be a narcissist, but you may exhibit narcissistic behaviors because of the learned behaviors. Um, but yeah, it's a trip. So I was listening to her and at, at certain points in time, you could tell that she's still bitter about the experiences that she's had. Um, and I get it. I get it. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to deal with. And I want to say dealing with disappointments and someone betrays your trust is difficult to deal with. Um, and I remember I was listening to her. I was like, gosh, she sounds so bitter. And I was like, I don't want to become like one of those bitter, more mature women, you know, who just doesn't trust anyone and who's just, you know, you can see the bitterness on their face. And when they talk, you know, they try to cover it up, but you can tell that they're bitter or some people are just freaking bitter. <laughs> they own it. And then it's like the Holy Spirit said to me, well, you have some bitterness that you need to deal with. And I was like, what do you mean? And I started going back through my life experiences from the time I was a child um, to being an adolescent, teenager, and young adult, adult to now. And if you live long enough, you're gonna experience disappointments. And some disappointments you could kind of shrug off as like, oh, well, that's life. But some disappointments 
are more than just disappointments. It's traumatic experiences. And one thing that I can say is I feel like with my family, my immediate family, um, we do a good job of downplaying experiences that have happened. And it's not okay, right? Because the, the damage is still done. And so I was like, harboring bitterness can block your blessings in so many different areas. In so many different areas of your life, you can't. You can get to the point to where you can't ex, ex, um, experience true joy and happiness. Um, you know, I feel like I should be filming this from a different angle. Hold on. All right, here we go. So you get to a point where you can't experience true happiness. I mean, you can put on a facade of of like really being happy and. I don't think you can fake joy, though. That's the thing. Um, but yeah, bitterness can can rob you of having a joyful life. And when Holy Spirit revealed to me that I still have some bitterness, I still have some bitterness from childhood trauma. I still have some bitterness from felt relationships, felt romantic relationships. I still have bitterness from people that I consider friends that really were not my friends. And I invested a lot of time and energy and, and put a lot of trust in people. And I hadn't thought of the word bitterness because I knew those things had happened. I think I was just kind of looking at it like, um, I just had an experience that didn't work out so great, right? That I didn't care for and that it was hurtful. Yes, there was some pain there, yes but I hadn't thought of it as bitterness. That was the trip part. So I know that there's some work that I need to do on resolving the bitterness that I have in my heart towards people, in my heart and mind towards the people that wrong me in some sort of way. And I know the first step is acknowledging that I do have bitterness. The second step is um, forgiving myself for downplaying what happened and not confronting it and maybe maybe I wasn't ready to confront it um you know I've gone to counseling but we never labeled it as bitterness and I think bitterness is a whole nother category of hurt and what I don't want to happen is I don't want to carry the bitter bitterness and have it rob me of living a joyful life is what I'm trying to say so yeah, um, if you recognize that you have bitterness in your heart, in your mind towards anyone, I'm not going to tell you to just forgive them because it's not that simple. It's not that easy. And forgiveness is a gift that you give yourself, but it's not something that you could just say, oh, I forgive you. You know, I've, I've, I've been to churches where they say you forgive by faith. So you say you forgive somebody and you just believe that you've forgiven them. I don't think it works that way. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm really glad that has been revealed to me and maybe that is part of my self-care journey. As I was saying, so I believe that recognizing that I do still have some bitterness in my heart is part of my self-care journey. And I'm really thankful that I was in a space to allow that that messaging to come through because now I can decide if I want to do something about it. And so I want to go deeper. I think for my next therapy session, I'm going to bring this to my therapist and just tell her, you know, this is what came up for me. And I really want to try and focus on that over the next few months. So or however long it takes to resolve that. So, all right, so that's all I wanted to bring you today. I'm gonna get in this kitchen, make myself some breakfast and get ready to start my day. But just know that I'm praying for you. And, you know, I'm, I'm just hoping that you will be able to come out of it on the other side and start leading a joyful life. All right, bye. Thank you.